Hello, hello. I didn't get to paint yesterday, so I'm fired up and ready to paint again today. And I'm going to try another angel wing <laughs> canvas. This one is 24 by 30. I'm zoomed in right now. And I wanted to show you, I'm doing all deco art products today. Snow white, titanium white, lamp black, dioxazine purple, Venetian gold, and rich espresso. So in the videos that I told you about, Kristen Alatister Steen, she has some uh, angel wing videos that are just really gorgeous. And um, it's where you do kind of like a tree ring pour, and um, but you don't do the tree ring shape. You just pour into the center, but you start at the top of your canvas and it it, it go, and it flows downward to give this angel wing effect. I tried it the other day. It went wrong. <laughs> I've been wanting to paint angel wings for months and I just ran across her video like last week. So I've got to try it again. And I also didn't watch another one of her wing videos where it showed where she poured the colors into her cup which helps. That's why I like when people actually show their process. Um, and that's why I always, even though it can be very boring and you can kind of skip through it, I always try to show at least me mixing one paint so you can see how I do it just to kind of get the feel of what it's supposed to look like when you're mixing paints. Um, so anyway, these are my colors. So I want it to be a, a contrast between light and dark. So that's the white, black, but I want the purple because I'm a purple fan and I want to incorporate purple into the wings if I possibly can. And then for the metallics, I love the Venetian gold, which is more of an antique gold. And the bronze, the bronze that they have is kind of coppery colored. It's too orange. This is Rich Espresso. It's the deepest in the golden family tones. So that's why I choose Rich Espresso. We'll give it time to see if it'll focus here. But I wanted to share with you before I actually get started. I had some skins I wanted to show you too. Below my video, there is a link at the beginning of the comment section. And if you're not real familiar with YouTube, number one, there is a bell at the right hand corner below, beside the uh, subscribe there's a bell and if you subscribe to my channel if you click on the bell it'll have two little or you know like little uh, parentheses kind of looking things around it which looks like it's ringing that means you'll get notifications when I post a new video so that was one comment I wanted to share with you but below the video it'll just have a sentence or two but if you click on show more on your laptop It'll pull the whole description of my video and my links to everything and products and colors in that area. Or if you're on your mobile device, then it's a down arrow and you just click on that and it'll do the same thing. And then, you know, if you want to get rid of that, you just click on show less or you click on the up arrow and the words go away. But um, at the very top, there's a link that says, come join me on Facebook. I have so many people on here that I would really love to connect with. Um, like they said that they wanted to try a version of whatever, like my Wings of Love, they wanted to try a version of it. And I would really love to see the results, but YouTube doesn't give you the platform to post a comment or basically like if they ask for, if someone asks for a chart that tells you how many ounces you use per square inch of your canvas. I have a chart like that. I thought I'm starting a Facebook group page. You don't have to remember it because it's below the video and you can just click straight on that link. The group name is called Sandra Let's Share Our Acrylic Fluid Art. There it is right there. It's got one of my pores at the top of the, of the picture and I have a few hundred members that are in there now, but I would love if you would like to 
come over to the Facebook group and request to join and then you can share comments on there it's a it's a page where you're allowed to just be you to share your uh, victories about whatever you're pouring or if like you pour something that was similar to my technique and you're really happy with it and you want to show it off this is the place to do it or if you want to find the chart of the pours or you know something like that or ask questions in more detail you can come join this group it's a closed group but anybody can see it to join and um, and then once you're a member of the group you can post your pictures and comments and you know we share about where we are and so many people have health issues or like me they've had issues where they have a family member that struggled with drug addiction or whatever and a lot of us have really been through some trauma in our lives and I've lost a husband to cancer you know things like that and there's a lot of people that have a lot of illnesses and painting is their source of comfort and therapy so I wanted to have a platform where you could come over from YouTube and join my Facebook group and be a part of that if you would like so I'm gonna give it a shout out for the next multiple videos just to make sure you know that it's there and how to get to it but the link is below the comment It's in the comment section below my videos also don't forget that Lily's mix which is another channel which she's been around for a while and I'm sure there's lots of you that are already subscribed to her channel she and I are going to collaborate together in Wilmington on June 23rd and do a live pour of some sort and you know open it up for people to comment back and that kind of thing and we are really looking forward to that we're so excited about it we're going to do it at her place first and then maybe the next month she'll come to my place and you know we hope to have some fun with this so be looking for that live on June 23rd which is a Saturday so anyway I'm going to pour on the 24 by 30 inch canvas I have my push pins in the bottom and it's ready to go and I want to show you I don't always waste paint people say it's a shame that you waste your paint well I don't always waste it this is from you know that last group of pours I did about three or four in the same family colors with aquas and blues and golds so this is all the runoff it's cut off out of my butcher paper it's on photo paper. I've got about 10 pieces of photo paper. This one is really gorgeous. It's got some of the copper in it. Big. I mean, this is stuff I can do jewelry with and everything else. So I keep a lot of skins. These were what I peeled out of my aluminum foil pan. So what I do is I lay these out on uh, freezer paper or parchment paper. Parchment paper is excellent for not allowing your paint to stick to it. It's actually what I wrap my paintings in before I ship them off to people. This is butcher paper and it's dirty right now and I'm not going to fool with cleaning it up. But like these are pieces that I pulled off that were kind of in this area. These are the larger pieces. But I mean, and they're, they're really cool looking. So, it's something that if you're not already doing, and you think that you would like to make jewelry one day, start saving some of your bigger pieces, layer them up between uh, parchment paper, and like here's one that has all kinds of greens and different colors, and if you turn them on the back, they even look even more different. These are all little chunks on top of big chunks. It's, I actually just enjoy peeling paint off the paper, to be honest. It's kind of like therapeutic, but this is like a stack of them. Um, so these are ones I had already peeled off and just stuck to the side. This one is really pretty. It has copper in it. I've got a 24 by 30 canvas. I'm not going to put a base coat on it because... Kristen, in her videos, she pours on hardwood boards, and they're, they're probably primed or painted, 
but she doesn't put a layer of white or black or anything down on top of it. So I'm going to start with a dry white canvas that's pre-primed straight out of the package. And I've got a ton of paint mixed up because according to the chart, a 24 by 30 requires about 25 ounces of paint to totally cover it. Now, I'm not necessarily planning on covering the whole thing, but I may end up doing so. So I wanted to have at least that much paint and plenty more. And what happens is if I don't use my paint, and I'm not putting any silicone in it today because I don't really want cells, to be honest. But if I don't use all my paint today, then it will get a little bit of silicone added to it. And then it'll go into my squeeze bottles. It'll be added to what paint I have in those colors in my squeeze bottles. And, you know, then I keep it in my squeeze bottles indefinitely. Of course, I never put it in the white or black, ever. So, um, here's my huge cup of dioxazine purple. Here is my large cup of rich espresso. I've got my large cup of white, black. So, I wanted to show you the very last one. This is Venetian Gold, and so I've put it into the cup, and I've used Oatrol with all of these because I did not have the DecoArt pouring medium. I didn't have enough of it. So I always do the one-to-one -one ratio. So that's Oatrol Easy Flow, which is like Floetrol in the United States. Oatrol is a European company. You can order straight from the company or on Amazon to get this. And it's really awesome. It's very self-leveling, very smooth. Uh, I've had great results with it. Very good quality product. And I graciously do demos with this product for Oatrol just to uh, highlight their product because it's really awesome. So this is my last color I'm mixing up. And these cups are, I think, these are 5 ounce. These are probably about 12 ounces. I don't know. They're pretty large. They're, you know, like solo cup size. And, um, like I said, I need about 25 ounces of paint. And this is a measuring cup that will hold about 20 ounces. And it has a spout, and that's why I'm going to use that. So I'm going to pretty much almost fill it up to the top, but I've kind of got a plan to space it out. So I made my notes from her video, Kristen's video, in the, in the order that she poured her paint, and because I have purple thrown into the mix and I've got two metallics, I had to kind of figure out how I wanted to do the order of the pouring or, you know, layering. So. It's going to be a little tricky. We'll see what happens. That's the thing about tree ring or gradient pours is it's kind of key to get the right order of colors to get the effect that you want. And hers definitely worked because she's got that contrast between the white and the black. And I, I wanted angel wings that had some metallics in it, but I'm using black to get that dark contrast with the white. And I also wanted to incorporate the purple. So I wanted the metallic golds and the purple incorporated in. I think she used black, white, and gold. And with any, any paint brand, or medium, Floetrol, Oatrol, any of them, there is always the chance of clumps. And that's what you just have to kind of look for when you're mixing up your paints. You have to kind of be observant as you pour that you kind of catch what you can. Because the, even the best of them, they're going to have lumps occasionally. So what happens is, like I used a couple of, well I probably used part of what was left of a bottle and another full bottle of this. And what happens is when I get to the end, I'll add my water into there so it's paint and water mixed together. So that way it totally kind of cleans out my bottle of the paint and I can utilize it with the water mixed in to water down my paint. Now with DecoArt 
bottled paint, you generally do not have to add water, but the metallics are always going to be thicker. And that was another question that one of my viewers asked about is what happens when you thin down your paint too much? When you thin down your paint too much, you've either got to add some uh, Floetrol or something thicker back into your mixture or like a, you know, add tube paint back in. Tube paint is always super thick. So if you're using a white paint, add a, a little bit of white tube paint back into it and that white tube paint will thicken your mix up again. I'm just checking. That's pretty good. I'm going to do one more squirt of water in here just to make sure I got all the paint out of the bottle. And it always seems like when I mix up my white that it's very, very bubbly and foamy looking. So it's always kind of good if you can let your paint sit for a, a little while. I mean, I don't let mine sit for days, but I have used my paint over a period of days. Like I used it and I did a pour, and the next day I did a pour, and the next day I did a pour because I had plenty of paint left over. It's great to let it sit as long as you want it to, as long as it's covered up well and everything. But I don't let my paint sit forever. When I'm ready to paint, I mix my colors up and I go to it. So I don't let it sit indefinitely. But, you know, the other thing, too, is you can always, like, I kind of will do this. I'll bang it on the table and release some of those air bubbles. I'm going to add a little bit more water to this one. And always scrape the edges of your cup to make sure you get all your oatrol, all of your paint, whatever pouring remedium you're using or whatever brand of paint, you always scrape those edges to make sure everything is very thoroughly mixed in together. So there's the Rich Espresso, the Venetian Gold, Black, White, and Dioxazine Purple. And I also added a little bit of black to my purple because I wanted it really, really deep. I didn't want it to be a bright purple and then with the white mixed in make it turn too pale. So, like I said, I really wanted a deep purple. And this is going to be my interpretation of kind of what Kristen did. And hopefully these colors will work and if they don't, I'll just end up doing something with it one way or the other. Never give up on what you're starting out with. You can always end up with, I think, something beautiful in the end. I'm trying to make sure to get the whole table on here. I'm going to put my gloves on. And someone gave me the idea too, when your gloves are too big, put on two pairs and that will tighten them up, which is a great idea. I still have those nasty vinyl gloves that I can't stand, but I went ahead and bought a box of latex ones that are more snug and you don't have the loose fingertips which I can't stand because then it gets into your paint when you're trying to pick something out it just makes a big mess so she starts the bottom of her pour with white because white will come out last and that's what you want to kind of go down the center of your angel wing effect so I'm just looking at her colors. And I want a good amount of white. Because like I said, that's going to be what gives you that central separation of the colors for the winged look. And then she had brown next. And this is where you kind of want a gradient. So... I'm going to put a little bit of black. And then I'm going to do a good amount of the Rich Espresso. Now I'm doing white again. And now 
purple. Good amount of gold. And I just about missed the cut there. White. Uh, I don't want it to go down. And I'm going to put a little bit of Rich Espresso back on top of that. So I'm going to move my cups out of the way. So I'm going to start it here in the center at the top. And and I'm going to have my canvas slightly tilted. So of course mine went off to the right, so this might be a crooked angel wings if it's angel wings at, at all. Curious to do. I'll pour just a little bit more white in here, because I'm afraid I don't have enough white. to make sure. See, and I don't know which way to go because of the it being angled. I'm going to let it flow down for a minute. Maybe if I can get it to go over a bit. I don't think so. bringing it back towards the top just for the heck of it. I so wish that didn't go that way. I don't know what to do about it to get it to go otherwise, so, so. This won't be another angel wings. I didn't put any silicone, and yet there's plenty of cells. I guess I'm just going to tilt and see what happens, since it's not going to be the angel wing effect anyway. This is where I didn't, I didn't put any paint on the canvas and what I had wanted to do was add white or whatever kind of after the fact there's too much paint in the center and so it's going in one section so I'm gonna let it flow back down again try to get it more evened out or it's not all in the center because the heaviest paint is going to be where the, the, the paint flows that's for sure This is hilarious. It's just like, you know, things look so simple when somebody else does it. And you might be good at a technique, like I might be good at swiping, but I can't I can't do Gina DeLuca's pores that I love. And I'm not having luck with the angel wings. Period. I was close on this one. I was just off center, so that threw everything off whack. 
So it's pretty amazing how the the bronze, well I put more bronze in my paint. So it definitely overtook the, the gold. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. I definitely don't like these huge cells right there in the middle. So basically I'm just trying to get my paint to flow onto this, the majority of the surface of the canvas at this point. Before I go any further, I'm going to think about this for a minute. And this is a big canvas. I wanted it to be beautiful. I'm going to do a dirty pour in this now. And now that, you know, it's not angel wings at all, I'm going to put in a drop or two of silicone to uh, get some pretty cells. So I'm going to do the bronze. You can still see me, right? I'm going to do a drop and do the gold. I want to add some more purple in this now. Another healthy drop of purple, I mean the silicone, then the white. And it's amazing that the black really didn't do anything major, so that's good. I'll throw in a little bit of black. Another drop of silicone. Purple. Finish off my white. And I'm going to have plenty of paint on this canvas, there's no doubt. Finish out with a little bronze and the emperor's gold or the venetian gold i'm sorry venetian gold emperor's gold and venetian gold are really very very close to each other in color so they're almost impossible to tell the difference so i've got that mixed i'm going to get my skewer and just run through it a few times I, I want to totally get rid of this section here somehow because I don't like the objects that are coming up. <laughs> and then this is where I added the white, so there's a lot of white there. So I want to maybe come up through here, but I like this thing. But, you know, by the time I pour something on this, it's going to totally change the look of it, I'm sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour. Use the heat gun. It's going to start dripping off like crazy. So I'm going to let it go down to the corner as much as I can. And then I'm coming back this way. There is a ton of paint on this canvas and it is heavy. and run off here now. Because there is so much paint, it's like going really fast. And that's okay. Now I'm going to take it to the other corner. Quickly. And now I'm coming back towards this corner. And I like this so much better. So I'm going to stop right here, even though it's not to the corner yet, and take 
some of this just excess paint on the table. That way you don't ruin the good parts, they're going to pour off. Okay, now I'm putting it sideways so you can see the whole thing better. I gotta wipe up my mess real quick. It's on the floor and everywhere. Corner of that. I think that helped tone it down a bit. When I use a straw like that, I'm blowing very gently. I do want to get some of the color to in intermingle with it though. Actually, I, I really like this now. It's not angel wings, but I just don't, I don't know how that happened, but just the way I tilted it, I guess, is the way it ended up making the light kind of go in between, in and out. Bring out a little bit of purple inside that gold. It was such a large area. So I usually play with stuff a lot and I'm going to try to avoid that today. I'm content with the way it's taking on its own kind of personality. I blew out a little bit of purple there and tried to soften the white squiggle through here, which I think I did okay on that. And I'm trying not to mess with anything because it's kind of, the cells are popping up on their own. And it's like, these are some really cool cells. I'm, I'm going to bring the camera down and hopefully I won't make you dizzy. I am terrible with operating that camera when I pick it up while it's recording. But I love purple. It's like my favorite thing. It is the color of the year. So I'm happy with it. I see one thing where I don't like that hard line right there. And I said I'm not going to play with things, but and I don't want to mess those cells up. I'm just going to try to taper, taper that purple a little bit there. The bronze, the Rich Espresso, not bronze, the Rich Espresso had, you know, and the original pour had really overtaken the gold or the gold was underneath, let's put it that way. And I had the big Rich Espresso blobs in the middle that looked like weird shapes that I won't even describe what they looked like. And so that's what prompted me to just pour the dirty pour straight across it and tilt. So you get a little bit of the original pour and some beautiful little tiny cells that are just popping through. And that's the part that doesn't have any silicone in it. And little tiny cells over here but this part is really really pretty I'm gonna heat gun it one more time I think I really like this one because it has a lot of areas that look like little geodes it's really cool and I'll hopefully be able to zoom in on that with the camera to show you pretty please and I'm not gonna lift the canvas up because I end up putting my fingers on the ends and especially when it's heavy and you mess up that beautiful flow of the paint that goes over the edges and the design that continues and I do not want to mess that up. Okay so here we are down at this level. Look at this area here. Oh there's a lot of areas but that is like super super pretty. I have a black canvas and it's almost like I want to do another pour with these colors again with black being more predominant to see what happens. Um, it's so pretty. But see these little cells that have popped up that look like mini geodes. It's weird. It's cool. And I even like the softness of the way the striations of the color are right there. Very earthy looking, organic. But see these little tiny dots? 
that right there is the original paint and it had no silicone so this is just it naturally separating with just the oatrol and the paint and water and see this whole area here is just it has that geode feeling to me but there's some really really pretty areas oh it's just I like it it's not my angel wings but I like it a lot so all of that is that beautiful Venetian gold and see there's a little wormy thing looking through there I won't even talk about that one <laughs> um, I like this up here the way the purple has popped up and all these little mini shapes throughout the gold section I think that's really neat and then that's pretty there with the purple and we have a little bit of the white and that was what was left of the angel wing section I do believe so everybody give a round of applause for the angel wings that didn't quite make it that's them in the corner on the side they're on the angel wings are on the sideline here's a little bit that's left of the black and the rich espresso and white and see there's some little tiny cells popping through that are really pretty so that was where there was no silicone in this area as well. So that's it right there. And I think that's pretty much it that I wanted to show you. But there's some really cool things going on. I think it's a beauty. I love purple and gold together. It's very regal feeling. Very elegant. Those are pretty shapes there that are kind of multi-toned. So, as usual, you see me play with my failure and try to make something better out of it. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, which means you like my video. If you want to subscribe, press the subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications, click on the little bell beside subscribe at the bottom right, and that will mean you get notifications. And then again, if you want to join my Facebook group and get a little closer to me and be able to uh, correspond with me there, go to Facebook and click on that link below. Well, you don't have to go to Facebook. You just click on the link below, and it will take you to that page, and you request to be a, a member and I will approve you joining. So, thank you so much for following me. And I think what I'm going to do is do a free giveaway, a free painting, when I hit 25,000 subscribers. And I need some input. I might have to do a poll or something like that and get some input on which painting I should give away. It's not going to be a huge one because those are extremely expensive to ship but maybe something that is uh, no larger than maybe 16 inches on the longest side or something like that one of my smaller paintings I will show some options maybe in a, another video and kinda go through them and see what the general consensus is about what you would like to possibly win and then I have to figure out how to do that with 25,000 people that's the part I've got to figure out so Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.